to understand is what is menopause. The definition of menopause is when the menstrual period stops. Clearly, men cannot have menopause because they do not have menstrual periods. So it's only women who get menopause. And menopause is that period when a woman has not had a menstrual cycle for one full year. That is what we call menopause. Men also get something called andropause. And andropause is when their testosterone levels go down. So men get andropause, but women get menopause. Is it preventable? No, it's not preventable. Because it's a natural process, it's a process of aging. When a person grows older, they reach a time when the eggs, so to speak, get finished and they are not producing any ovaries, any ovum anymore from the ovaries. So they stop getting their menstrual cycle, but they also have other effects that come with menopause. As you've read or possibly heard from Mrs. Michelle Obama describing her symptoms when she was going through menopause. There are lots and lots that have been written about. Menopause comes with hot flashes, it comes with uh, headaches, it comes with loss of sexual drive, it comes with excessive sweating, but most importantly, it may come with a feeling of fatigue. And as women grow older, between the age of 42 to 50, they may attain their menopause. But there's something called the pre-menopausal period before menopause actually sets in. The menstrual cycle may change and the periods become much heavier or they may become lighter. And sometimes people get, uh, women get bleeding with um, clots, heavy bleeding, terrible cramps. So menopause seems like something monstrous, something very scary. So, how can we manage those effects of menopause? First of all, to understand that yes, a woman is going through menopause and also has achieved menopause if she has stopped getting her menstrual cycle and to learn how to exercise, eat a healthy and balanced diet, um, get enough sleep. If you're worried of getting excessive bleeding, speak with your obstetrician and gynecologist so that you can get help. Dr. Sabrina, is it possible for um, a teenager to experience menopause? Um, so if a teenager attains menopause, that is extremely unusual. It's true that some younger women can go through menopause because let's say the uterus is removed for many reasons. Maybe it has cancer, or if a, a lady gives birth and she has a uterine rupture, the uterus is removed, she can attain menopause. But also there are some conditions where the hormones just stop being produced, and that is early or premature menopause. So children between zero to two years should not be kept on a television for more than 30 minutes or even exposure to digital media. Because the longer you keep them on it, the more they are likely to hurt their eyes or even to get into a position of not being um, stimulated by other things. It's important to limit television time. It's important to limit digital time, like being on the phone for a very long time, being on, on um, a computer or a television for a very long time because it can hurt the child's eyes, but also hurt the child's thought process. When children are growing up, especially the younger age, zero to two years, they should be allowed to experience nature, to, to be distracted and be able to see. They can get addicted to cartoons. So taking them off the television after 30 minutes is important so that you can help them to be able to do other things like 
learning about their surroundings and their environment and keep their minds um, broader. So for children up to five years, it's important to allow them to exercise. And there are exercises that can be taught to little children. For example, um, running around the sport, even swimming, um, playing football, playing, uh, throwing the ball. It's important for children to learn how to exercise and keep them in a routine of enjoying how to exercise and keeping in the sun so that they can attain their bodies um, to have physical fitness. For a child who just sits down, their brains are not stimulated. So it's important for you to be able to allow your child to exercise and participate in that exercise with them. How else is beneficial? Exercising? To children? Well, exercise is, is really beneficial because one of, one of the most important ways is it strengthens the bones, it strengthens the muscles, but also allows for the child to release a hormone called um, dopamine or even endorphins to keep them happy and excited and creative in their nature. So exercise is extremely important. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one is related. How can parents in the day-to-day -day, um, world teach their children to be social right from childhood? So being social is something children know. When children are growing up from the age of eight weeks, that is two months, they learn the social smile. And if a mom smiles at this child, they smile back. That's a primitive reflex. Social competence or learning how to be socially upright or even sociable can be taught simply by allowing a child to do simple things like sharing, saying thank you, saying I'm sorry. All those things are taught. But children learn from adults. If you, the adult, is not doing these things, then the child cannot learn. So it's important for us to let the children mimic what we do. If you say thank you in your house, if you say I am sorry, if you say please, those things a child will learn. And then for our culture, if a child sees you as an adult kneeling down to, to, for gratitude, praying, they will learn those good attributes of being socially upright, but also morally upright and being sociable. Is swinging important for children? Because I see them in other schools. Swinging or swimming? Swinging. Swinging on a swing? Yes. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a form of sport. But also, too much of anything is bad. Because remember, if you take a child through a swinging motion, you're actually swinging their brain in the process. And they could become dizzy. So, I'll, I'll let, the safety of the swing also has to be taken into consideration. Very high swings shouldn't be used for children who are younger, who are not able to hold on without any protection. Because remember, in the motion of swinging, a child could easily fly off that swing and hurt themselves. I see many mothers force their children to sit early before the right time. Mm -hmm. Uh, they say a girl child sits faster than a boy child. How true is this? And when should I know that it's the right stage for my child to see? Also very good question. You know, these days mothers are very anxious to make their babies be born, start walking, start talking. I've seen mothers buy footballs for two-month-old babies. They want the baby to kick that football even when they are still little. But Every child goes through what we call milestones. And the first milestone is a, a social milestone, like I said earlier. They learn how to smile. Then they learn how to hold their heads up. Then they learn how to roll on their bellies. Then eventually learn how to sit. And all this is a process because human beings, unlike animals, are not born and immediately start running. They go through different milestones. So it is true that girls have their milestones slightly earlier than boys. So a girl would be expected to have sat upright 
without any support by about three months, while a boy would expect him to sit by four months. So when a mom starts sitting the baby on her lap by about two and a half months for a girl, that is safe. And then for a boy, around three and a half months, that should be okay. Um, lastly, as parents are preparing to take their children back to school, how can they prepare them health-wise? So, um, parents, I'm sure you're there, you're excited, you're enjoying your children, it's holiday time. Thank you for being with them. It's a joyous time. And I hope you took them to celebrate Christmas and New Year's Day. We are sorry for those who didn't make it, and it's really sad that they didn't. But for those who are alive, those who are healthy, those who are well, continue to take care of their children. It is important that children feed well during this time. Build up on those nutrients that they are going to need when they go to school. They need to be vaccinated for those who need their vaccines. They need to be taught good manners. They need to be encouraged to read. Because remember, if you're on holiday full blast without reading a little bit, you may get a little bit rusty. So parents, keep motivating the children. Give them encouragement. Pray for them. Pray with them. Teach them that the world is not going to wait for them. They need to be ready for the world. Thank you.